my first OTB tournament. I was eight years old, I'd started playing chess just a few months before it, and I had one goal in mind, to win it. The games are hilarious, full of blunders, but also happy attacks. Let's go. I was there together with my sisters, Christina was playing in my same tournament because she's just one year older than me, and Claudia was just supporting us. This is the first round, a picture from there, my glasses are horrible, but I was wearing my lucky shirt. I had the black pieces and the only opening I knew how to play was e4, e5. And now my opponent played the move d3. Now you know that in the opening you have to first develop your knight and then your bishop and then to castle. So usually you should just push one pawn in the center of the board, then start develop your pieces and then push the second one just when you want to go out with the other bishop. So d3, not really a good move. I went out with the knight because I had done my studies, you know. And now my opponent played f3, which were not really so good. Really, maximum two pawns in the opening, then you have to bring out your pieces. I went out with my bishop, c3, my opponent just plays pawns, and now I go for the center. I love it. I'm, <laughs> I'm a good player. She developed her first piece. Nice. I took and took. And now, guys, look at the bar. I missed a very strong tactic. Bishop have to. I win the queen. I just win the queen. Bing boom bam. I take the queen. I had a bing boom bam and I didn't do it. Instead, I traded the queens and now we are in this endgame, which is not so easy to win. But after knight out, I just go out with the knight, um, bishops out, bishop out, the other bishop out, and now trade, trade. These are all normal moves. And now this move will shock you. What? <laughs> I mean, the knight is just hanging. And I was eight years old. I still didn't know what a free cheese macaroni was. But hey, I took it. <laughs> that was juicy. Now, before attacking my bishop, and I was already giga chat. So I went along cattle with check. The king has to move, but instead my opponent covered with the knight. And now this, is, this knight is pinned, you know? And so what I did, I moved my bishop here. And I'm attacking the knight that is pinned. And there is no way to defend it. I'm going to win it. So king e1 was played, I took it, now I have two extra pieces, that's really nice. But we play, when you are young, the first thing that you tell you, that they teach you is play until the checkmate. Never, never resign, because you never know. So king f2, bishop takes, I take, attacking the rook. The rook moves, I give a check. The king moves, and I give checkmate with the bishop. But my dream to win this tournament didn't last long because at the second round i played against pelyushenko olga i named it uh, it's still my nightmare <laughs> basically she was from my same region uh, her family was coming from ukraine and his father was like 1600 elo and i was terrified because he was a very good player and i knew that he was his coach and i was very scared the game started with d4. I don't know why I play this move. I always play e4. I think I wanted just to surprise her. So a night out, and now I went for the BBC. I was, uh, <laughs> I was an intellectual kid. So d6, this is the pairs. I didn't know exactly any plan here. Now I know that a very good plan is to play bishop there, queen d2, f3, long castle, and then to attack. Back then, I didn't know anything, so I was just bringing out my pieces. Oh, I played queen d2, actually, that's nice, but I forgot to play the move f3, because now my opponent is a very strong player, played knight g4, and traded my strong bishop. Okay, fine, I developed my pieces, uh, the pawn is attacking knight, I won the back. So usually in this position, black is playing really well, because it's usually playing on the side, wants to bring out away my pieces. And then at some point you need to attack the center with move like c5 or e5. And this bishop is usually very strong. Imagine here, for example, the move c5. I cannot take because the bishop takes here and my rook is lost forever. So that would be really painful. <laughs> but she played uh, knight d7. I went with the knight out and now c5. I didn't take because I saw that this bishop would be like really super strong, but I think I had no idea how to go on and I played king h1. 
So let's discuss about the plan here, what I should do with the white pieces. And for sure, I should take care of the center. So maybe the move c3 would be a very nice move. So after pawn takes, I take back with the pawn and I have still an amazing center. If I want to try to attack, yeah, king h1 could be an idea to play then f4 and maybe f5. But in general, I should um, slowly activate my pieces, maybe play against this weakness of this pawn. So bring the rook to the c file. And yeah, play a little bit positional. I didn't know what that word even meant. <laughs> king there, bishop out. I took... I, I feel like that I do this mistake. I I am the first one to trade and this is not good we know that right uh, because I'm basically activating this knight for free and I shouldn't do that now what am I doing rook g1 I, I don't know guys I was a, an assassin on the chessboard uh, because I always wanted to do check to give checkmate so I wanted to place the rook there and maybe I don't know start some crazy attack but yeah, my plan wasn't too effective. And now I'm giving away my bishop. Again, a mistake because the position is open. And so in open positions where the center is not blocked, the bishops are stronger than knights. And I gave away my both bishops. Plus, I lost a pawn. Now, okay. Uh, what? <laughs> okay, I should play rook b1. Uh, just attack this bishop and the pawn behind. And I should take back the pawn. But hey, I wanted to attack. My plan, I'm sure, my plan was to play a 4, g4, just push them all, open files and give checkmate. Uh, but it uh, didn't really work that well because now the queens are going to be traded. And yeah, we have this endgame. I'm attacking this bishop. The bishop is moved. Uh, what is this move? I have no idea. Maybe I want to double the rooks. But I think like I should try to get back this pawn. Or, okay, maybe I want to play the move d4. Let's see. d5. This is a mistake. And I think I exploited it very well. I took... I oh, know, yeah, this move is genius. I'm attacking the bishop that is protecting the pawn. And the bishop cannot go anywhere to keep this pawn protected. Wow, I was a genius. <laughs> okay, the bishop moves, attacking this little pony. But now I take... Uh, bishop takes... I move the knight, attacking the bishop. They move it, and I take the rook. Now... Engine says that this is a miss win, but who cares? They say that knight c6 is better, right? Because I'm attacking two pawns. But hey, I won back the pawn and I must have felt very proud of it, right? But there is... Ooh, I see why. There is bishop c3, guys. And uh, I'm a little bit in trouble. I mean, there is still rook a4. I'm protecting the knight. But my pieces are a little bit passive. Anyway, she played this move. Ooh, I didn't trade. I'm surprised. I played knight here, which is a very nice move. Attacking there, attacking here, activating the knight, attacking this pawn, attacking everything. Okay, rook takes, knight takes, I'm attacking the bishop, the bishop is moved, and rook into the action. Nice. Rook there. So basically, this was now a normal, a normal endgame. I'm very proud of how I played. I sacrificed the pawn, but let's go to the critical moment. I lost a pawn here just because... I gave a free cheese macaroni and she took it. And a few moves later, we traded, yeah, we traded a piece and a critical mistake is happening soon. So basically she was attacking this pawn. I was attacking this pawn. I should just trade it. And then this engine should be a draw. Instead, I defended my own pawn and now I'm starting to be in trouble because I'm running out of moves and here to blunder. Oh no. Oh no, the tactical blunder. I played so good for 45 moves. And now, bam. Damn it. I must have felt so bad inside, guys. I was such a competitive kid and I wanted to win so badly. Also to make my, f my parents proud. I think this was my mission for my entire childhood. I always had the best grades in school. It was a bit toxic uh, because I was suffering when I lost i was suffering really a lot but it pushed me to be good to learn to, to to improve and i must have died inside at this moment uh, and yeah then it's not over i i i did something that eric rosen would be so proud i did a Ro eric rosen trap let's see so i'm a piece down so we just i just played slowly i lose all my pieces and this pawn is about to promote, as you can see, I give away my rook. And now, there is just one chance, which is stalemate. And look, look, 
I'm going with the king to the side of the board. There we go. There we go. And now, guys, if she goes with the king here, which looks like about to give check me, this is stalemate. But she played bishop there. And she gave checkmate. Just just a few moves later. This girl ended up winning the tournament. I was very sad, but hey, game number three. I'm playing actually against a lady that then become a friend of me. Uh, she's amazing. Uh, E4, E5. This is the only opening that I was able to play. And I think in this game, I play an amazing plan that has made me win so many games. Let's see. So I developed the knight. She develops. Amazing. Bishops out. Perfect. And D3. Now she played H6. This is a very typical move that avoids all the plans of the fried lever to go with the knight here attacking this weak pawn and also to avoid the bishop to go there. Well, I was very sad because I love those ideas. But hey, I have to move on. I played also H3, knight out, knight out, castle. And now, guys, I was, yes, an assassin when I was a kid. I wanted so badly to give checkmate. So all my moves are about that. I just showed the king and I wanted to checkmate it. So I went knight h4. It's a bad move. It's a really bad move. I'm moving the, the same pieces again. And there is also some, there are also some tactics ideas. Maybe knight takes can be played. I mean, no, it doesn't work. Because after knight takes, it's true that the knight, the queen is attacking here. But actually there is knight takes. Now, if I take here, this pawn is hanging, and this piece is hanging. I mean, I don't know why Hanjin says that this is equal. There is b5. Wow! <laughs> this tactic is absolutely insane, because after bishop takes, there is queen here. And there are three pieces under attack. But okay. Uh, we were, like, young, and we didn't see all these tactics. Uh, knight e4 is what my opponent played. And what did I play now? Castle. Solid, good. D6 and bishop e3. I have a plan. I want to trade here and then place a knight there. My opponent played knight d7. This is a very bad move because you're moving again the knight. And where is exactly the knight going? Also, the knight is leaving a little bit of protection of the king. And that's what made me so excited because I went with the queen here. <laughs> that's playing really with fire because look at this bishop. There could be a discovery check with the knight, but I didn't care. I just want to give mate. Uh, the knight moved, and now my queen is under attack. But hey, I just went back, and I say, like, I'm looking here. I'm looking here. This is good. Now, she took on c2, which looks like a free pawn attacking the rook. Do you think I care about the rook here? No, no. I just want to give mate. I don't care. You can take my rook. Actually, now I think I screamed inside me. Oh no, my rook, because there is checkmate. She saw it, she played g6, and now, do you think that I took her rook? No, I had checkmate in two guys, because this is pinned, and I can take you with the queen and give checkmate, but I didn't see it. Ah, I didn't see it. I took there with the knight, because I thought, I don't know why, I took there with the knight, I'm attacking the rook, threatening many discoveries, um, discovery check, King h7, she's running away. I took here with check. She took there. And now I took on f7. This king is feeling really, really sad. And she went queen f6, which is a good move because she's stopping lots of checkmates. And I played the move h4. Yeah, Anjin says this is a blunder, but you know, I'm a very basic, I'm a primitive chess player. I just play for checkmates, you know? I see like, and, and tricks. I was playing for tricks, which is bad, I know, because I see, ha, ah, free bishop. Oh no, my bishop, because if she takes, I have a nice move. I, I don't want to spoil it. She played d5. I said like, oh, take my bishop. Now I took there and I said, oh no, my bishop. Now I'm attacking the queen also. So she sees, oh, maybe I have to move the queen. And so she took and I gave checkmate, which is very nice because the knight is controlling that square. Now this is my perfect game. I nearly made no mistake. E4, E5, I'm again with the white pieces. I develop, bring out. This is the opening I was playing, my, always the same opening. And now I like it because she didn't play H6. So I developed my pieces, she castled. Oh wait, ah, she went with knight G4, this is crazy. So she went with the knight here attacking this pawn, basically a fried lever idea. But you have to know that if you can castle immediately, that move is not good. 
Because here the only thing that you have that makes sense is to play knight takes, rook takes, bishop takes, and this. And basically you gave a black gave away two minor pieces, a bishop and a knight, three pieces each, three points each, six points, for a rook and a pawn, also six points six points. But in the middle game, the rooks are not really playing, are not really so active. So two minor pieces are better. So this will this is not a good deal. Uh, in fact, after castle, she castled, I played h3 and she went back. But this gave me just some tempo. Now I went with the bishop here, and I love this idea. Oh my god. I'm painting this knight, there is a queen hanging behind. She played h6, I went back, she played d6. She wants to develop this bishop, right? But now I have knight d4, knight d5. This knight is pinned, cannot take, and yeah, I like it, because she cannot do anything. She moved the king away, but now I can take... Oh, oh, I didn't take there. Okay, I played queen d2 because I'm smart. I will keep mate. So my plan is to take there and then to take on h6. And well, this is what happened. She played bishop here. I took, pawn takes, and I took here with check. Now the bishop t uh, moves, and I took on f6. I'm threatening checkmate. So she has to sacrifice the queen, which she did. I took back. And now she went on the side, trying to take my bishop, but I didn't care about anything happening there. I went with the knight here. She moved the rook away. Queen h6. I'm already looking at this nice checkmate. She played a5, which is not really good, because now I know this idea. I know that. But the bishop is controlling the square. So what I did, get rid of the bishop, rook takes, and checkmate. But hey, guys, life is not perfect and this chess tournament was not perfect i th this was like this were the first three rounds then i lost the game i won all the others and we are at round eight i play against also a player that became very strong lately uh, after after this tournament and she played a perfect game she destroyed me e4 e5 knight out bishop c4 knight here fried lever now, I knew a bit of the fried lever, but I made a big mistake. d5, pawn takes. The best move in this position. So d5 is the only move. Really, the only move, and I knew it. Because if not, I'm losing this pawn. It's going to be a fork. I'm losing material. It's the end. But after pawn takes, now the, th the current theory says that knight a5 is the best move. You're attacking this bishop, and you're going to take later this pawn. But I played knight takes now this is considered a bad move right now because there is knight take f7 which is a p sacrifice but at my club i cited it after this queen f3 double attacking the king and the knight there is this king e6 move i'm a piece up i need to defend but hey i knew also like knight deer and then i go with the knight on e7 then i play c6 i try to defend now the current engines are they know that this is really bad for black <laughs> because black and uh, white can just castle play d4 rookie one and this king <laughs> is in big trouble but hey engines were not too strong there was just fritz which wasn't really good and we didn't know that so this sacrifice was considered playable and so what she played after knight takes she played the move d4 she was opening up the center because my king is in danger i developed this Bishop protecting the knight, and she castled. And now I made a mistake. I took this pawn. This was really bad because she didn't take back. Of course, I, I thought like this was a free cheese macaroni because the knight is protecting it. It is protecting it, but she went with the rook here. And I am a bit in delay. I cannot castle. My king is stuck there, and I tried to castle. And I always try to castle long. So I played queen d6. I want to castle long. But hey, it was already too late. She played knight take f7. And guys, this move deserves a brilliant. This move is, is like really, really, really amazing. Let's put it because it's beautiful. It's a p sacrifice. After king takes, there is queen here. Now it's really, really insane because the queen is attacking also this knight. And once the king goes back, I went on e7, this bishop is pinned by the rook. Look, all the white pieces are so active. I learned a big lesson here. Bishop takes. She took the piece. She take the piece back, right? And now this is also hanging. 
And the problem is that Rook takes his incoming. I'm going to lose a queen. And so what I did, I run <laughs> with my king. But I still lost a pawn. But guys, this is something that I'm so proud of my little young Alessia. I always try to give checkmate. I went with the queen here. And I have a plan. I want to take this pawn and then give back rank checkmate. Or back rank checkmate. And this is what happened. I went there and I took here. I'm threatening mate in so many ways. But here my opponent <laughs> didn't really do that. But imagine that she did that. Call an ambulance! But not for me. <laughs> and she gave me mate. I was about to give checkmate, you know. But I was one move too late. Guys, this game destroyed me. Because I had no chances to get in the podium. And if you get in the po if you get first place or second place in an Italian championship, the federation is like sponsoring you to go to the European or World Championship. Hey, that was my dream. That was like what I wanted so hard. And I knew that this was the end. So I was a little bit tilted. Uh, but I wanted to win so hard the last game. This is round number nine. I'm facing the London system. <laughs> I didn't even know what this opening was. I had no idea. And what I'm playing right now shows that, yes, I'm an assassin on the board, but I was a crazy assassin. So let's see, I'm developing my pieces. Knight here is not considered the best move against the London system, but who cares? I'm just developing pieces. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> what is this move? I think I wanted to block this idea. I was scared of this pin. These pins, you know, bishop pinning the knight. I didn't like them, so just went back. Developing pieces. This is all normal. Uh, <laughs> so again, I was very young. I just wanted to play. I had one plan in my mind. Play long castle and then push all the pawns and give checkmate. This was my plan, one plan that I knew. I just knew how to attack, and this is what I did. Castle, queen d7, c3. My opponent is just playing the standard uh, London system moves. You cannot believe the move I played. <laughs> I played bishop page 3. Again, I was playing for tricks. I was playing aggressive move, but tricky ones. Because my opponent can just take. My only idea is that I go here, I then play, play, uh, play, play knight there, and I pray that my opponent moves this knight away, and this bishop away, <laughs> so that I can give checkmate. This makes absolutely no sense! Come on! But hey, my opponent didn't even take. She went bishop back, and I went long castle. I have a dream, and I kept my dream. Now she went with the knight there, and I didn't really understand what was her plan. I played g5, attacking the knight, she went back, and I played rook g8. My plan was clear. I want to give checkmate. She still didn't take my bishop, <laughs> which is nice. Queen c2. This move is very subtle. Something is about to happen. I played rook g7. I'm protecting this pawn just in case, and maybe I want to bring the other rook there. And now she took. Okay, fine. <laughs> my bluff didn't work. I didn't even take back. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I play knight here. She develops a piece, and now I make a big mistake. I'm the first one to trade, and this is not like, like, this is a small problem. This is like a detail. But the problem is that after this, I went to take a pawn, and guys, ah, ah, I lost the queen. I think my face became like red as a tomato because I couldn't handle the shame. I realized that I might lose this game, and hey, I wouldn't even end up top 10. I have to tell you one thing. There is my sister, Christina, that was playing in the same tournament. She was one year older than me, but she started playing... I taught her chess. I was stronger than her chess. And we had like the same points, or maybe she was a bit... Uh, she had a higher points than me, I don't know, I don't remember. But she won the last game. And so I had to win, I had to beat her, you know? <laughs> I lost the queen. And now I tried my best. I really tried my best. I fought until the end. But I did a mistake that when you are behind material, you don't have to trade. And I traded way too much. There we go. I brought the rooks. Attacked the knight. I traded again. That's very bad. You shouldn't do that. 
and now I was just a full rook down. I tried something, you see, I'm, I'm trying to give mates, you know, there are some ideas. For example, let's say this. I, one thing that I'm so proud as a kid is that I always tried. There are some checkmates ideas. Of course, this is just hope chess, but uh, I tried. Now, my opponent played the rook there, traded the rooks. I'm hopeless. I tried my best, never resigned. And here there is checkmate, but hey, I still gave away my rook and got checkmated. End of the story, I got 12th. My sister got 4th. She won a huge cup, a huge trophy. And look at my face. <laughs> I was so angry with myself, so disappointed. But guys, after this tournament, I was training every single day. And I wanted to come back the next year play the same tournament and hopefully to win it this time. Like this video and subscribe if you want to know what happened one year after. Thank you so much guys for watching. Let me know in the comments if you like this and yeah, see you next time. Bye!